Hey everybody, welcome back. I got another exciting morning here. It's Sunday morning and uh, we've got another clutch from one of our beautiful girls. This is another blue-eyed leucistic possibility clutch. Uh, so we should have some bells in here. We bred our bamboo black pastel pinstripe yellow belly to our lesser pewter female. If you're not familiar with pewter, that's a pastel cinnamon. It's just referred to as pewter. Um, so uh, came in this morning, um, kind of need to be in a hurry a little bit here, but uh, came in and found that she was wrapped around her eggs. And it was weird because I could only see one egg and she was kind of laying flat, but she had laid them all out and was coiled around them nice and tight, keeping them safe. So let's uh, pull her out and see what we've got. Look what we have here. All right. So when I first came in, I could only see one egg. She's curled around them so tight. So let's see what she's got. This is our lesser pewter girl, Bones. And you may remember her. All right. Hey, Mama. I don't think you're done yet. Looks like she's got a couple more still in there. I hope, hopefully, she's not egg bound. What I'm going to do is I'm probably going to put her in a temporary tub for a minute. All right. So sometimes this can happen where they don't lay them all at once. She looked like she was done. Maybe she was just resting. So we got eight eggs here. It looked like there was at least two more inside of her. So this is an interesting situation. Of course, um, we want her to get them all at once, but uh, sometimes they may take a little longer. Last year, I had a snake that laid one egg two days before all the others, um, but they were all fine. Um, and these do feel pretty fresh. Some of them aren't connected, so I'm definitely going to have to candle all these. But uh, we'll, what I'm going to do is I'll probably give her a, a warm soak for a little bit and observe her and then put her back in here and wait for her to lay those other two eggs. If they don't come, then I'm going to have to do uh, something else because if she's egg bound, that's very dangerous. But anyway, I'm going to get a wait at these, on these eggs and get them set up and then we'll just have to wait and see. All right, so 884 grams for these eight eggs. Wow, that's crazy. Two, four, six, eight. I counted right. 886 grams. That, that's nice. Over 110 gram average per egg. Phenomenal. We'll get them in the box, candle them, and then we'll, we'll wait to see what happens. All right, so I'm going to get started here, and I'll probably speed through this and uh, speed it up and put a little music there for you if you do. Well, there you go. Uh, this won't be the end. Hopefully we'll have some follow up in the next day or two to follow up on her laying the rest of her clutch. Um, like I said, this has only really happened once where I had uh, a snake that um, laid one egg two days before the rest of the clutch and then she laid the rest of the clutch and all of the babies hatched and were perfectly healthy and normal. Uh, so hopefully it was something like this. Hopefully she just got a little too worn out. Given, I mean, those were big eggs significantly larger than your typical, or at least in my typical, I, I'm always hoping for about 100 gram per egg average. Usually they're right around there, a little bit less. This is 100, almost 111 gram average per egg. So those are pretty good size eggs. Uh, maybe she just got tired and needed to take a break. So in a minute, I'm gonna give her a little spa treatment, put some warm water in the tub and let her soak in it for a little while, as long as it doesn't panic her too much because she tends to be a little flighty typically. 
but we'll let her hopefully relax and, and rehydrate and catch some of her strength back up. And then maybe by tonight she'll have passed what I think is two more eggs that, that look like are still in there. Um, but if, if the worst happens and she is actually egg bound, then we'll have to address that when it happens, because that can be a very, very dangerous, uh, if not fatal, uh, condition. So we'll take a look at that later. Um, and I'll update you. So, uh, stay tuned. We'll see you shortly. Hey everybody. So I just came in to check on her. It's about 8, 8 PM and she had laid one more egg. So here's number nine. Looks good and a whopping 116 grams. So another big one, we're going to get it put in the incubator with the rest of the clutch. It does look like she's got one more um, in her. So we're going to hope that uh, give her some more rest. She'll lay that last one overnight. We'll keep you updated. All right, everybody, I'm here with another update on our egg bound females clutch. I was putting another clutch away and I could kind of smell something. So here we are, this, this poor egg, the one that was laid um, later than all the others is, I don't know how well you can see the coloration, but it's, it's gone bad. It's, it's not viable any longer. Um, it smells rather unpleasant um, and it's changing color. So we just know that that one is unfortunately no good. Um, my understanding is that happens a lot of times with egg bound females. They, uh, the eggs that don't get laid in the first attempt go bad. Um, so it's not a surprise. I was hoping for the best since it was laid later that evening, but apparently whatever kept it in there or the extra cook time, um, you know, killed what was in the egg. It looked good. It looked strong. So I'm, uh, I'm going to candle it just in case and kind of just out of curiosity, see what it looks like on the inside, but we're going to toss this one out and get these eggs back in the incubator. And, um, she still has one egg in her. It's been almost a week now. So, um, it actually exactly a week now. So I'm pretty sure that nothing's happening with that one. It's not going to come out on its own. So I'm probably gonna have to take, uh, more invasive measures to make sure I can save her life. Anyway, stay tuned for the updates on this clutch. Hey everybody, it's Joel. Uh, it's late and I'm tired, but I wanted to film a quick update on bones. Um, if you've been following along uh, with this video, um, you know that, uh, well, at this point, of course you don't know dates, but it's been a couple weeks since she laid her clutch and um, we discovered she became egg bound. Uh, of course, gave her a bath, warm soak and some massage and let her be. And she passed that other leg, other egg about uh, 12 hours later, which you just saw did not ultimately make it. Um, but that 10th egg was just massive and was, was stuck in her. Um, we gave her a little over a week and it was not moving. Baths didn't help. Um, palpating, we couldn't get it to move at all. Um, and so we gave her a little bit of time just to see if she could get it moved, but she couldn't. Um, <clears throat> and so I did not film this, but I did end up aspirating the egg. Um, I didn't want to film that because I didn't want it to seem like I was encouraging people to try that on your own. Um, I am not a medical professional. I'm not a veterinarian or anything like that. So um, I felt comfortable doing the aspiration myself. Uh, I have a lot of experience giving injections um, to uh, humans and other types of animals, but um, I decided to aspirate the egg. I didn't film it because again, I didn't want it to seem like I was encouraging that. It's not something I would recommend um, that, that most people do unless you really, really know what you're doing and are comfortable with it. Um, uh, long story short, if I can try to do that um, uh, about over this past weekend, today is Wednesday, um, I aspirated the egg and I was able to withdraw almost 75 milliliters of fluid from her, which is so much. Uh, I was just shocked at how much would come out. Um, so I, I do think it, the egg was just too big and, and it was stuck. So we drained it and um, I put her in a fresh clean tub, clean water on paper, butcher paper, not uh, coconut since she did have a wound underneath the scales. I didn't want um, any, any risk of uh, that getting dirty and infected. Um, so she's been in a clean tub and I've been checking on her. Um, 
I'm actually leaving the country in two days and uh, I'm feeding all the snakes a day early to make sure I have plenty of time to check on them and get everything squared away before I leave. And so I went to check on bones and I was really nervous, but I was really excited to find that she did finally on her own pass the egg. So this is what was left. It's kind of gross looking. It's even grosser feeling, but even this itself is pretty massive. Um, but thankfully in draining the fluid, she was able to get it out of her system. And um, that means that she should be safe and just drop something. Um, you know, being egg bound can be fatal if, if uh, we're not able to get that cleared. So it was such a relief, even late into the day, so much going on to look in and see her with that egg was just, uh, it's a great ending to the day. Um, so uh, I'm going to try and put this all together and get it out for you guys. If you watch this to the end, thank you so much. It was, uh, it was new for us as our first egg bound female. It was very scary. Um, but uh, I'm so happy that um, this turned out the way it did. She should be fine from here and be okay to um, hopefully recover. I'll leave her on the paper until I get back from my trip. My dad and my, my family are going to be checking on the snakes each day, so she'll still be good and cared for, but that'll give her time to heal up. And then once I get back from my trip, um, I'll go ahead and do a full clean out and get her back on Coco, and hopefully then um, she'll go back to eating and recover her strength. But it looks like everything's going to be a-okay. So oh, what a relief. Thanks for sticking in here. Um, hopefully you found this interesting um, and educational to, to walk this journey with me. Um, but again, the recommendation, if you're not comfortable handling something like this, is to seek help from a professional. And by that, I mean a veterinarian. Um, but uh, that's all for today. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I hope you guys have a good evening. And remember, please share the love of reptiles with anybody you can. Take it easy and good night.